Hey everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome back to part four of my Dankin Ropa Trigger Happy Havoc Let's Play. Last we left off, we did a little bit of socializing and Monokuma also gave everybody a little bit more incentive to start murdering. So we'll see if there actually is a murder in this episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so it's been about a week since I've played, I think. I'm in uh, Siaka's room right now because we switched rooms, that's right. So I'm just gonna... The bed itself looks exactly the same, but knowing Sayaka has slept on it makes me look forward to trying it out for myself. Oh, and immediately we're going into a little bit of a uh, creepy factor here. <laughs> oh, I got another one of those little coin things. So I was told that I should start going to the, um, the store that's within the school because that's where I can start buying gifts and things. So I will make sure to check that out at some point. Wonder if it's worth investigating the other things in this uh, room. Never hurts, right? You want to be very thorough. Oh, there we go. Exactly. Oh, the DVD. Okay, so I wonder if he's going to play it and find out what her motivation is. Like I said, I predicted it was something to do with her group. They're probably being held hostage or something. That reminds me, I never did get a chance to find out what was in her video. But it's probably best if I wait until she brings it up again. Yeah, that would be kind of a douchey thing to go behind her back and, and watch it without her, um, without her knowledge. My room came with a toolkit, but Sayaka has a sewing kit, just like the note said. And next to it is a map of the body's vital organs. Alright, um, can I just go to sleep now? Don't think Sayaka would like me snooping around too much. I should probably go to bed soon. As I lowered myself onto Sayaka's bed, a pleasant fragrance enveloped me. Sayaka's scent. Do you have to say scent? Like, ah, uh, oh, that's so creepy. Maybe it will bring me some sweet dreams. Feeling a li little bit better than before, I fell asleep. Imagine you're all in a big spaceship in the middle of an intergalactic adventure. You've heard of Noah's Ark, right? We're sort of like that. We've set sail and left Earth behind. Here, you don't have to worry about crazy neighbors, corrupt cops, drunk drivers, or pyromaniacs. You don't have to worry about the ozone layer or asthma-inducing air pollution. And of course, you don't have to stress about studying for finals or practicing for the big game, but... But even our divine world of freedom has a few rules. After all, freedom can only exist because of rules. If you're really dead set on returning to that tiny piece of dog poop you call Earth, please do your best to follow the rules. I hope I've made myself perfectly clear. So then, let's everyone do our best to follow these new guidelines and live happily ever after together! I am really curious about Monokuma and what he is. I sat up, still half asleep, and rubbed my eyes. Slowly, I pulled myself out of bed. I remembered I was in Sayaka's room. I just remembered I promised to eat breakfast with everyone else. I better get going. I left Sayaka's room and made my way toward the dining hall. A few people had already gathered at the dining hall by the time I got there. Hello, Makoto, and good morning. Can you believe it? I was the very first one here this morning. That's not a surprise. <laughs> good morning. Hey, Makoto. Morning. <laughs> I suppose I'm early. Well, everyone seems to be in pretty good spirits. I figured everyone who had arrived on time could be considered model high schoolers. And the ones who showed up a little late? Yo. Yo. Sorry. Sorry I'm late. My makeup just would not cooperate this morning. Well, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. My morning uh, duty took a little longer than usual. Why is everything you say so gross? Oh, I hope you die. We're the types with a more relaxed sense of time. Most high schoolers fall into that category. And finally, the ones who kept everyone waiting forever. Indeed. I suppose I'm late. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. 
My bad, my bad. My bad, guy. Slept right through my alarm. What's your problem? What? Is it so awful to be late? Yo. I didn't oversleep, just so you know. Nope, gut lost. I blame the Bermuda Triangle. Don't care about time or other people in general. They're the kind to move at their own pace. We all know people like that. They, uh, they have their own time. But regardless, everyone had arrived. At least, that's how it was supposed to go. Oh. Hmm. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Where's Sayaka? Oh. Uh... By... Oh, I feel... Oh, that's the, uh, that's the douchey rich boy. I don't know about Bayakuya, but... I would definitely put Sayaka in the model high schooler category. Uh-oh. So for her to be so late... Oh, no. Uh-oh. What? Oh, no. Sayaka, where are you? What's going on? Does something happen? Yo. Hey, man, have you seen Sayaka? <laughs> Why would I have? I just came straight from my room to here. Um... Did she forget about our breakfast promise? However... I got the sense she always has her stuff together. Listening to everyone talk like that, a small dark speck of unease rose up inside of me. And that speck started to grow quickly. I need to go. I have to check on her. The words had barely left my lips before I flew out into the hall. Oh my god, guys. Ah, my hands are getting clammy. Where I headed first was my room, where I'd let Sayaka stay for a single night. Where she was supposed to be safe. But over the course of that one night... Oh, shoot. The room had completely transformed. What the hell? Oh, my sword is gone. Oh no, it's right here. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. It's been taken out of its sheath. More importantly, where's Sayaka? There's no blood on it, though, and there's no blood anywhere, so I mean, that's the one good thing, I guess? There's a keychain on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my key room- or my room key. I gave it to Sayaka when we traded rooms. Oh crap, if anything's happened to her, they're gonna blame me for it. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, what's up with all these scratch marks? It's probably from the sword, I'm guessing. There are slashes and gouges on the walls and the floor. This music's not helping, like, it, my, it, my heart rate's kind of going up a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's take a look inside. He's about as, like, nervous as I am. No way! Oh, no! No! No, 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 no! Oh, no. It took me a second to realize that I was screaming. What I saw dug its way through my eyes and buried itself into my brain. And then... and then... Everything went black. Well, I guess I'm not romancing her. <laughs> Shoot! Well... I was told that there was probably going to be a murder in this episode. I was really hoping it wasn't going to be her, though. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring at a huge ceiling. It was a ceiling I remembered seeing before. And when I sat up, I saw someone looking at me. Again, it was someone I'd seen before. Yeah, shoot, they all think it's me. Ah, ah you're awake. Finally, are you okay? Yeah. Now's no time for sleeping. Get your ass up. Uh, um... You were unconscious, dude. I had to carry you back here. Well, It's no surprise, considering what happened. What happened? Hey, are you okay? They're all taking it a little bit too well. So it wasn't a dream? What I saw... It was real? Hmm. That's right. It really did happen. Immediately I blame you, because you were late. So... Yeah, and also I just don't like you. Sayaka is dead. A deep, dark despair worked its way through my body and then exploded out of me. I shot up and took off running. Hmm. Hey, where do you think you're going? I have to see for myself. I have to see if Sayaka is... If Sayaka is... Just give up. You can check once, twice, a thousand times. Sayaka is completely an... Iro... the Dead. Sorry, that word. <laughs> I have to see for myself. Why? Listen to us, man. Why? What do you think's gonna happen if you go out there? Well, what good is it gonna do just sitting around here? I mean, why are we all hanging out in the gym at a time like this? Our friend, Sayaka, she's... She's dead. 
dead when I said that. It finally hit me. I realized she really was gone. Calm down. None of us want to be right now. Sorry, none of us want to be here right now either. Then why? Shouldn't it be obvious? Monokuma, he told us all to come here. Well, hold on. Don't talk like that. We all protested it. I mean, we remember the terrible price Sayaka had to pay. But... So... I'm the one who convinced them to come. Right now, we need to do whatever he says. I'm still suspicious about this girl. She seems to be going along with things a little bit too, like, quickly. We're his prisoners, right? It's not a good idea to defy him without reason. Correct. We don't need to make any more sacrifices than we already have. Why should we listen to anything he has to say? It's obvious he's the one who killed Sayaka. Wrong. I would never do that. If you can believe anything, you can believe that. <laughs> he's here again. Hey, um... Unless someone violates a school regulation, I absolutely will not interfere. I can promise you, I won't do anything that goes against the purpose of your school life here. Listen up! I'm famous at safari parks throughout the world for following the bear times one rule. But... but then, who did it? Who killed her? Come on! You already know the answer. The one who killed her is one of you. Nobody had a reply for that. One of us killed Sayaka? Don't be stupid, that's... Wah -wah? What's the matter? You guys all look like you're about to see a dove get shot up with a Gatling gun. <laughs> Don't you remember what I told you when this all began? One of you decided to kill Sayaka so that you could graduate. Someone's just following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. Well... You're lying, right? Of course he's lying. I'm telling you, he killed her. Wrong. Nope, sorry. One of you is now a bona fide killer. If they wanted to, the one who did it could testify to that little fact. What? Without thinking, I looked around at everyone. They all had the same look on their faces. Everyone looked at each other with a combination of fear, suspicion, and confusion. Uh, um... Are you serious? What, what someone... Someone killed someone! <laughs> it is amazing what some people are capable of. Just hold on. Hey, hold on! Don't assume he's telling the truth. Stop talking. That's enough. Before we do anything else, I'd like to confirm something with the stuffed animal here. Hmm. If one of us really did kill her, that person gets to graduate from the school, right? See, he's being really suspicious because he... I... Yeah. Immediately I suspect him, but I feel like this could be a red herring to throw you off to someone else. Because he's just sounding way too suspicious right now, so you instinctively want to assume it's him, and also because he's a jerk. <laughs> huh? Come on. Don't play dumb. That's what you said, isn't it? If you kill someone, you get to leave. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's because... Naive. You're just so naive. You think it's really that easy you can just kill someone and waltz on out of here? Hey, You're super naive. Devilishly naive. Hellishly naive. No, no, no. The real thing has just begun. The real thing. Now then. Are you ready? Allow me to explain the second part of the rule regarding graduation. Just like I explained before, you must kill someone if you want to leave. However, even if you do that, there's still one more part to the agreement you have to uphold, remember? Then perhaps... You are referring to rule number six of the school regulations. If you are the blackened that committed the murder, you can't be found out by any of the other students. That is what you are talking about, is it not? In other words... Bingo! It's not enough to just kill someone, you have to actually get away with it. Which naturally means you need a system in place to assess whether or not it's been gotten away with. Yahoo! So, a certain amount of time after a murder has taken place, a class trial will begin. Class trial? Hmm. Yup, it'll begin a few hours after the murder. Everyone will gather together, including the blackened who committed the murder. And they and the spotless students will all engage in one big debate showdown. During the trial, you'll have to present your arguments about who you think the blackened is. And once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote. If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive, and the rest of you will receive your punishment. Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, 
That's all there is to it. Well... So, uh, what exactly is this punishment you keep talking about? What do you think, dude? Hmm. Oh, well, to put it simply, what? it's execution. <laughs> execution? What? And by execution, you mean... Execution is... Execution. Execution! Electric chair. <laughs> Poison gas. <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane. So, to make sure I understand, if we get the culprit right, then only they die. But if we get it wrong, all the rest of us get executed? Well done. What a smart little chimpanzee you are. Look at you implying you didn't do it without actually saying it. So it's basically what the outside world calls a lay judge system, or an inquisition type thing. Which means you'll be deciding who you think the killer is. Hmm. But judge carefully, because all your lives are on the line. Uh -huh. Okay, let me just add the rule I just described to your handbook. Make sure to keep it in mind. Hey. Wait, hold on a second. You You're freaking insane, you know that? Huh? Hmm? A class trial? What the hell is that? I don't want anything to do with it. What's this? Why not? Stop it! What do you mean, why not? Why do I have to waste my time trying to figure out who murdered someone? What? I like not the fact that someone got murdered, but the fact she has to, like, actually do work is what's bothering her. What, are you saying you're not going to participate in the trial? Only punishment awaits such blasphemy. What the hell are you talking what? about? What? Punishment? Hmm. I might, I don't know, throw you in a deep, dark, scary prison or something. Shut the hell up! Shut the hell up. Say whatever you want. I'm not going to be part of this. I don't, don't be so selfish. Stop it. You're the one being selfi selfish. Kill whoever you want. It's got nothing to do with me. Man, I thought she was cool. Now she's just being really selfish. The evil standing before me. I'm trembling with fear. Shing. But I won't give in to such evil. It's my style to stick it out and resist till the very end. If you really want to get out of here, you'll have to go through me first. As he said that, he came charging at us, although it was more of a waddle. But then... Are you enjoying yourself now? Are you? Hmm? Violence against uh -oh. Mr. Monokuma is not uh -oh. allowed. You violated a school regulation. Are we going to have another murder right now? I invoke the mighty summon spell. Help to me. Oh! Whoa! 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 Holy crap, things just escalated so quickly. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to. Wow. Me. Suddenly, right at the end, her eyes shot wide open. And just like that, she never moved again. Holy crap, you guys. We have two murders within the span of, like, ten minutes. Wow. I was saying that this this game was moving really slowly, and now, now I kind of regret that. Man. No way. What the? I don't... This can't be real. No way. Well, now. Now, I am painfully aware of the great power and meaning of a promise. I really wanted to keep a corpse from popping up for no good reason, you know? But I guess you all needed to be taught a lesson after all. Ah, what an amazing promise. But now you guys understand, right? Now you see just how serious I am. Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you just obey those school regulations. Junko's body had been impaled with a bunch of spears. An unbelievable amount of blood started pouring out of her body. I like the fact that they had to make it purple to make it not so gruesome. I, like, this is a game about murders. It's rated M. Why are you censoring the blood? It was the first time I'd ever seen the moment someone's life came to an end. Nobody there could de deny what they'd seen. Junko, who until just a second ago had been our friend, was dead. She died. She'd been murdered. In simple terms, it was the death of a human being. Hey, um... It's really not all that shocking. 
She just died, that's all. Just went and died. It's no more remarkable than the inevitable demise of the entire human race. It's just as natural as the eventual end of the world itself. <laughs> this isn't some superhero comic, so it's not like when you die, you didn't really die. This is reality. Why? Why did you have to kill her? Didn't you say you would put her in prison or something? Hmm. I changed my mind. I knew it. No, you've been wanting to kill this entire time. Say what? Kill this entire time? Don't be silly, you can't kill time. Or are you being metaphorical? Are you saying I wanted to waste time this whole time? It. Come on, what do you take me for? I'm Monokuma. Well now. Anyway, none of that matters right now. I have something I'd like to give you to help you in your search for the blackened. This little file has all the information I've gathered about the death in question. I like to call it... The Monokuma file! There we go. Thank you, Monokuma. Hmm. I mean, naturally, you guys aren't experts at this kind of thing, so you can only do so much with a corpse. So instead, I've gathered up everything I know about the circumstances and cause of death. Yeah. What's that? How do I know the cause of death, you ask? Because <laughs> the, the surveillance cameras picked up the whole thing. I got to see it all go down. So then... Wait, so then you know who killed Sayaka? <laughs> of course I do. If I didn't, I couldn't possibly pass a fair and accurate judgment during the trial now, could I? Correct. That's a good point. The judge has to be able to make the proper decision. That's somehow comforting. Well? Now then, please put your full effort behind the investigation. After all, you don't have any choice but to give it your best shot. Seriously, you don't have a choice. Okay, so we'll meet up for the class trial in a little while. And with that, Monokuma disappeared once again. He left us stunned and confused. He left us at a total loss. He left us with Junko's dead body growing colder right in front of us. And for who knows how long, nobody said a word. The fact that Sayaka and Junko were dead was a huge shock, of course. I am, I am shocked because I thought they were going to be like main characters. I thought it was gonna be maybe like a minor character that was gonna, you know, be biting the dust, not like... I don't know, man, that like really just tri like, it's tripping me out right now. But there was more to it than that. It was also the idea that one of us had actually murdered someone. And that if we didn't find out who it was, we would all die here. We'd found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't help but look at each other with open suspicion. It was the worst situation imaginable. And yet, even in such a perversely terrible situation, she didn't show the slightest hint that it had gotten to her. Hey. Now's no time to wallow in your depression. The worst thing we can do right now is lose all faith in each other. That would lead to the same disastrous result as having total faith in everyone else. What? Huh? In other words... Cooperation is absolutely key at this point. Who you decide to trust or not trust, of course, is, of course, up to you. <laughs> Continuing to think and talk about the deceased certainly isn't going to help anything. Saying stuff like that is just... How many times have I told you, anyone who can adapt will die? Death is the only thing awaiting those who are unable or unwilling to adapt. <laughs> if that happens, you only have yourself to blame. That's terrible! What an awful thing to say, especially after what's happened. Just a second. Right now, exposing the killer is the most important thing. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. <laughs> She's right. We need to begin our search right away. I still don't trust you. Even if they're trying to throw me off the scent of the real killer, you are my number one suspect right now. Of course. Either way, we can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice to move forward. What the heck? We just have to do it, I guess. What other choice do we have? <laughs> no way in hell am I letting someone kill me. All right, damn it, let's do this. We just have to do it. Everyone kept repeating that sentiment. They were using it like a mantra to keep themselves or to give themselves strength. But they're right, we just have to do this. No matter how much we don't want to, we have no choice. If that's what it takes to survive, then that's what we have to do. On top of that, there was something I needed to find out. I had to know why Sayaka had to die. Why she had to be the one. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Otherwise, I knew I'd never be able to accept her death. Which is why I don't have any choice. I have to do this. All right, so we are in the actual investigation uh, part, I guess, and Junko's dead body is just kind of... I'm just going to get it out of the way and check this out, even though there's going to be nothing here. I gently place my health on Junko's lifeless body. 
I touched her wrist to check for a pulse like they do in movies and stuff, but... She really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say. She was gone. <laughs> I don't know why I even bothered to check. After those injuries and losing that much blood? Frankly, I'd be shocked if she did survive something like that. Huh? Hold on. Hold on, just wait a second. She's d Really, dude? You're just- oh my god, this guy. Then that means- that means everything that happened so far is real? It's not a joke or whatever? It's really real? Hell no! Someone save me! Let me out of here! Somebody help me! What's your problem? You're just now accepting that? Well... Even he had to be snapped to reality eventually. Hey. Before we start searching for Sayaka's killer, we need to decide what to do about securing the crime scene. What do you mean? Hmm. You're thinking of putting someone on guard duty so no one can disturb. Sorry, so nobody can disturb the area, aren't you? After all, if the car culprit decides to destroy the evidence, we're pretty much screwed. Hey. In that case, I don't mind doing it. I don't like having to think anyway. I'll let you guys figure out who killed that chick. Okay, then we can let Mondo look after the scene. <laughs> well, no, we can't just leave him there alone. What? What? Why the hell not? Stop talking. Isn't it obvious? If you were the culprit, what's the first thing you would do? By volunteering for guard duty, you're in a position to destroy all the evidence you want. <sighs> what? F you. So then. Fine, then I'll stay on guard duty as well. That way there's no problem. Mm -hmm. Two-player co-op base defense with the two of them. With their stats, they're totally OP. Since we won't be able to help investigate, we're putting our faith in the rest of you. But... I'm still f pretty freaked out, but I'll try. See, that's the problem when you volunteer to do things, it looks very suspicious. But I trust Sakura, she seems like, you know, pretty honorable. Huh? Don't fuck with me. Alright, so I'm guessing everyone... I want to talk to, uh... Bayakuya, Togami... The names are so... <laughs> they're so long. Okay, so they're all pretty much gonna say the same thing then. Alright, um... Is there anything worth investigating here? Probably not, but I'll do it anyway. Oop. Uh, there we go. Because so I was like, I knew there was something where you could investigate. Okay, so he is... He's letting me know that I have to... There's nothing really to see here. Ugh, how do I leave? Just a second. Hold on. Huh? Before we get begin the investigation, isn't there something else we need to discuss? Oh, yeah. Okay. Subtle hint, anyway. I have to talk to her. We're going to find out who the killer is. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. Um, okay. Is that the thing that you wanted to discuss? I'm already lost. Alright, maybe checking my book will help. I don't know if this would... Okay, I was wondering if maybe it would, like, it would update about, you know, if they're deceased or not. Are, are you serious? Oh! Oh! I, are we... <laughs> so you finally note? Oh, what? What the crap? Notice what? <laughs> I was looking through the Monokuma file we received. Yeah, I was trying to find the Monokuma file. I was looking all over, like, throughout my... Ugh. And I noticed something very obvious and very unusual. Huh? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead, take a look. Notice anything interesting about where Sayaka died? Oh, she's gonna blame me, huh? She died in Makoto's dorm. Ah. What? She's right! <laughs> then could it be? All at once, everyone's gaze turned to me. Hold on a second, you've got it all wrong. For just one night, I traded rooms with her. I did it because she was afraid. What you expect us to believe that? Just tell us the truth. The look in everyone's eyes had done a complete 180 from just a few minutes earlier. The feeling of suspicion and fear had returned. In other words, you think I did it? So then. Are we all done talking? We need to begin our investigation soon. At this point, we should split up. We need to get to the bottom of this and find out who killed Sayaka. We'll have to collect clues to form a foundation, then construct an argument to come to a final decision. If we get this wrong... So... Well, do I really have to say any more? Perhaps you need... I'd rather you didn't know. Goodbye. 
everyone pray for good luck. With that, Kyoko hurried out of the gym. Goodbye. I'll be going too. And just like Kyoko, he was gone before we realized it. Yo. Oh yeah, I'm on guard duty, huh? I better head to the scene of the crime. Mm. Ah, that's right. Hey, damn it. Let me just say this right now. If whatever son of bitch did this is here right now and they're thinking of destroying that evidence, You're fucking dead. they better not let me find him. I'll skip the trial and cave their goddamn skull in myself. I'm serious. I will F them up. Letting his deadly words hang in the air, he and Sakura ran off. So, um... But, I mean, we're not detectives or anything, you know? And we're gonna inve- Sorry, and we're gonna investigate a murder? How do we even do something like that? Well, I do have a lot of experience with uh, Phoenix Wright, so you can depend on me, I say, as I will most likely screw this up. <laughs> I wonder if anyway. I screw up the first trial, is that it? Is that game over, everyone dies, and then I have to restart? We don't really have to do anything in particular. We already know who killed Sayaka. Man, Toko, I was like so nice to you before. What are you implying? This is it was you. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Whoa, don't come any closer. Are you gonna kill me next? So, um... Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. It's not for sure that Makoto was guilty yet. Yes, I like you. I knew I liked you from the beginning for a reason. Um... That's true. We may as well at least check, um, check just to check. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, I couldn't help investigate. Aww. Wait, why not? <sighs> I'm not good with blood. All it takes is one glimpse and I black out. Oh yeah? Well, whatever. I don't think anyone was expecting much from you anyway. Alright, I guess I better get going. So is that kind of like a subtle hint that Toko probably won't be murdering anyone because she can't stand blood? Or is she just saying that because then people won't be suspicious of her? Wait, don't go yet. You have to hear me out. But it was pointless. Everyone had already left. And their parting looks at me had still been filled with suspicion. Does everyone really think I'm the killer? How did it turn out like this? Seriously, they've got it all wrong. Why do they have to suspect me? I have to do something. Otherwise, everyone will... Execution is... Execution! Execution! Electric chair! <laughs> Poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane! I can't let that happen. I can't let things turn out the way Monokuma wants. All I have to do is find out who really did it. Who really killed Sayaka? So are they gonna let me actually investigate the scene? Because, um... I guess if they watch me go through it, maybe they'll let me just investigate. Because, I mean, I have to check the crime scene, right? I guess I should look through the Monokuma file we got before. The victim was Sayaka Maizono. The time of death is estimated to be around 1.30 a.m. The body was discovered in Makoto's room in the dormitory. All evidence suge suggests that the death took place in the bathroom. The cause of death was a stab wound to the abdomen. There was also an injury to her right wrist. Specifically, the wrist appears to have suffered a fracture. We have no choice but to push forward if we want to find out what happened. Somehow, I have to find out the truth, so that we can all survive. And for Sayaka, I have to find out how she was killed. Okay, truth bullets. I'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, help me! I'm begging you, God, Buddha, Mother Earth, God of Space, King Neptune, help me! I don't care who it is, just get me out of here! Hero doesn't seem prepared to do any kind of investigating right now. Aren't you going to help investigate, your hero? Um, but I can't leave Junko here. I feel sorry for her. I have to stay with her. Man, everyone's coming up with excuses, huh? Alright. Okay, so I've already investigated Junko, so I don't think she has anything to do with it. So, I think I should be okay to leave the gym, hopefully. I'm not missing anything. I'm guessing I probably am just gonna want to go, like, right to the, like, my room, because, yeah. There probably isn't gonna be anything here. So I headed to my room where Sayaka's corpse still remained. I better examine the state of my room a little closer. That might reveal something new. It's good to be in the actual investigating part of the gameplay. 
This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. Does this mean it was used in the attack somehow? And plus, it's been taken out of its sheath. I hadn't actually looked at the blade itself till now. I shouldn't be surprised it's coated in gold too. On top of that, some of the gold coating has come off parts of the blade and the handle. Yeah, the handle especially is missing a lot of the coating. I remember the coating sticks to you even if you just touch it a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty big thing. I'm guessing these slosh marks were from someone dragging the sword around and slicing at it. There are scratches and gouges on my walls and bed. Is that evidence of a struggle? It looks like there must have been some kind of fight in my room. Damn it, I was right there in the other room. If only I'd heard something. Wait. That would not have been possible. Huh? huh? Don't you remember? All our rooms are completely soundproof. So something could happen in the room right next to you and there'd be no way that you could know. Well. Perhaps this was another of Monokuma's strategies, creating an ideal setting for murder. There's a key on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my room key. If I remember correctly... Ah, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. Aw, I miss her already. She was so sweet. I felt bad for ever thinking anything suspicious of her. When we switch rooms, we switch keys too. So Sayaka would have had the key here in my room the entire time. But if that's true, then how did the killer get into the room in the first place? Could Sayaka have forgotten to lock the door? No, that seems impossible. Yeah, because she said she wasn't going to open the door for anyone. After saying that, there's no way she would have forgotten to lock it or opened it for any reason. Maybe she dropped the key somewhere and someone else grabbed it or something. No, that's not possible either. Sayaka was in here when we switched rooms. With how scared she was, she wouldn't have gone walking around, so she couldn't have dropped it. So how did the killer... I'm thinking, is there a way, like a vent or something, someone could have gone in that way? But how would they know that? Looking at the lint roller, it looks like there's way less than there was before. Did Sayaka see how dirty my room was and decide to clean up a little? Hmm. I'm wondering if they used the lint roller, like if there was, like the gold flakes came off, if they used that to like sweep up after to, I don't know. I'm thinking like way ahead here. It's, I always do that with these games. There are gouges in the bed, like someone attacked it. What the hell happened here? Toolkit is still inside the drawer. I don't see any evidence it's been used at all. Which makes sense, I guess. I mean, it's mine, and I haven't had any reason to open it. I can't even imagine a situation where I'd need a toolkit like this. Yo. Yeah, seriously. Oh, Mondo. Why? We ain't exactly Why? in the mood to be building effing furniture, right? So you haven't used yours either, then? Why? Not just me. Why? Nobody's busted theirs out yet, far as I know. Actually, we were talking about it yesterday. By the way. None of the guys have opened their toolkits yet, because, like, why the hell would we? But then again, I mean, just because someone says that doesn't necessarily mean that's true. The notepad is still here, but I don't think it's relevant right now. Okay. Oh, I could do that. Th oh, boy, there's a lot of things to check. Uh, I didn't check the sheath yet. Oh. Wrong, wrong thing. Mm. Well. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. Does this mean it was used in the attack somehow? So it's just the sheath, but... There are some scratches on the sheath. They must have been made with something sharp. But how did the sheath get scratched up in the first place? Even if someone used the sword during the struggle, it doesn't make sense for the sheath to be damaged. I mean, if you're going to attack someone with a sword, the first thing you do is unsheath it. A heavy sheath like that would only get in the way. It could just slide right off in the middle of a fight. So why are there scratches on the sheath? Hmm. That I don't really have any, expl any explanation for right now. Oh, okay. I want to check the door. Okay. Uh, surveillance camera. <laughs> so 
like, I don't suppose you'd let me check out the surveillance footage, would you? No, I didn't want to check that again. Ugh. Ugh, duh. What? Alright, let's go in the bathroom, I guess. Check out the actual... Ugh, I've been kind of dreading it. Oh, no, it's not letting me, so I have to check everything before... Sakura, do you think I'm guilty too? Hey. I try not to make assumptions like that. I simply don't know whether or not you did this. Hmm. Whatever decision the rest of you come up with, I will follow your lead. I see. By the way. You know, I realized something while I was on guard duty. The killer could have already destroyed some evidence, right? Before anyone found the body, I mean. There's a trash room here in the dorms, right? They could have tossed some stuff in there. Ah, oh, good thinking, Mondo. Yeah, that's definitely possible. You son of a bitch! That dirty bastard. Ugh, shit. Anyone who raises their hand to a woman is scum that deserves death. That's what my brother taught me. You're fucking dead. Well, who's to say it was a guy, right? So if I ever find the son of a bitch that did this, I'm gonna pound his goddamn face in. Yeah, but what if it was a girl that did it? Yo. That'll all get sorted out when the time comes. There are scratches and gouges on my walls and bed. Is that evidence of a struggle? Okay, so it's basically the same thing as before. Okay, uh, shoot, how do I... hold on just a second. Okay, so... oh, the trash can? Can I check? No, I can't check the trash can. Alright, what have I missed? So I've got... did the key, did that, sheath... Scratch marks, lint roller, bed, dresser, a surveillance camera. Ugh, I'm missing something here. I checked the TV. I apologize if you guys are all screaming at me right now. <laughs> no, I didn't want to check the door. Ugh. Okay, uh... Oh, jeez, yeah, I should probably talk to her. Derp. Hey, Kyoko. I quietly called her name while she was investigating the area. But... What are you doing? Yeah, I'm guessing, like, she's either in on this or she's, like, a detective or something. Isn't it obvious? Mm, no. Not really. I'm searching. Searching? She was down on her knees, carefully inspecting every inch of my room. Did you lose a contact or something? I don't know what she's doing exactly, but she seems to be concentrating pretty hard on it. But a few seconds later, she suddenly stood up straight and said, Are you a clean freak? Uh, no, I don't think so, but what? Nodding, she glanced around my room one more time. I see. Interesting. What's interesting? Hey. Just as I suspected, there's something very unusual about your room. Unusual? What do you mean? So... I've searched your floor from one corner to another, and I didn't find one single strand of hair. Really? Indeed. Not one hair from the victim, and not one hair from you, even though you've been living in here. You know, now that you mention it, I noticed something while I was looking around before. It looked like the lint roller in my room has been used, but I never touched it. Could someone have used it to... I see. Very interesting. Your room didn't have a single hair in it, and someone used your lint roller without your knowledge. In other words, someone other than you came in and scrubbed your room clean. Was it Sayaka or the killer? Well, that's the question, isn't it? That's Sayaka being like, ugh, what a filthy pig. I gotta clean up after this guy. Okay. I think that's everything. Can I finally go in the bathroom? Okay, I can maybe finally check this out. I can't let it get to me. I can't afford to freeze up now. Forcing myself to push my panic down, I stepped into the bathroom. Looking at her made it painfully clear it wasn't a dream or an illusion. She'd lost everything that made her, her. Sayaka. All at once I was overcome with dizziness, nausea, the urge to burst into tears. But I can't. I can't hesitate now. Why? Why did Sayaka have to die? I have to uncover the truth. I have to find out what happened. I wanted to give up, I wanted to collapse, but that thought held me up and supported me. 
Okay, where to start? Oh, well, I guess there's only two things I can really check out right now. I looked past Sayaka to the wall behind her, and there I saw... What? Written in blood were the numbers 11037. Did Sayaka do this? See, whenever I see things written out, like playing Phoenix Wright, I always uh, immediately assume it's something like that's spelled backwards or there's some other meaning to it, but who knows. I told myself I simply couldn't face what I saw, but, but now's no time to think like that. I pulled out the Monokuma file to verify what it said about her body. Some sort of sharp object had been thrust into her stomach. That must have been the killing blow. But whatever they used to kill her, where did they get it? It's definitely something I should look into later. Also, according to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's right wrist is broken. Her wrist does look- oh yeah, look, that's the, um, it's the gold stuff from the, uh, the sword. Her wrist does look swollen and bloody, that's for sure. But there's something sort of glittery there on her wrist too. Right there, where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery. That definitely concerns me. Another thing that concerns me is... There's some blood on her left index finger, but that's it. The palms of both her hands are totally spotless, so how come only her left finger... Oh, did she use that to, um, probably to spell out the, the numbers, right? Sayaka's wrist has been added to truth bullets. A stab wound in her stomach is what killed her, so when she broke her wrist, that must have happened earlier on. I mean, how would her wrist get broken after she'd already been killed? So it's very possible she broke her wrist during the struggle. The killer attacked Sayaka in the main room, which is where her wrist got broken. After that, the killer cornered her in the bathroom, where they inflicted the deadly wound. Oh, <sighs> okay. Is there anything else I need to... No, I think that's it. I hope that's it anyway. It would seem... It looks like you found it, right, Makoto? The bloody numbers? That's most likely Sayaka's dying message. I've never seen something written in blood before. It really was her final message. It's as if she wrote it with life itself. Right. Do you often talk like an inspiring poet? But the numbers she wrote, what do they mean? 11037, I have no idea what that could possibly mean. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Is, okay. 11037, okay, let me remember that number. So... The way she wrote the numbers makes me think she wanted to use her body to block them. If she wrote them in that location while she was sitting the way we found her, it means she must have wrote them by turning only her hand towards the wall. If you were to write something in that position, do you know what the result would be? Well... Think about it. You're not gonna tell me? Lakota. You need to uncover the mystery of this case yourself. Okay, so if you turn, so it would she would be writing it the opposite, so then the numbers would be opposites? Oh, okay. Well, that kind of puts me back at square one here. Otherwise, the case will end and you'll remain unconvinced. I have no idea what you're trying to say, but it's obvious you're not going to tell me. So maybe it's seven seven three zero one one. It sounds like Kyoko knows what Sayaka's dying message means, but honestly, I have no idea. Oh, I know who I should talk to. When it comes to numbers, who better to ask than the ultimate programmer? Makoto. There is one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Do you know how the door to your bathroom got broken? Broken? Oh, you mean how it gets stuck? What? Get stuck? Yeah, I guess I'm the only one, but the door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. When I first tried to use it, I thought it was just locked. But once you learn the trick, it opens no problem. Correct. So the door doesn't quite fit the frame, huh? But actually, I'm referring to the broken doorknob. The doorknob? That's right. You didn't notice? Well, just try closing the bathroom door. I'm sure you'll see right away what I'm talking about. I did what Kyoko said and shut the bathroom door. Huh? The doorknob? What the heck? The doorknob's practically about to fall off. Why is it like this? It would seem... Someone must have used a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew it. Whatever it was, it's obvious this was intentional. 
It was intentional. Why would someone want to do that? So... I guess maybe they were trying to get the door unlocked and end up breaking the whole thing. But my bathroom doesn't have a lock on it. Only the girl's bathroom can lock, right? Okay, so it would be someone who wouldn't... Who would probably have tried to push the door, real, like, think it's locked because it's not opening. And then they used a screwdriver, so she's probably thinking it's not me because... If it was me who did it, I would have just been able to figure out how to open the door. She stood there for a while, lost in thought. Then apparently struck with a sudden realization, she shot a question at me. Just a second. I have just one more question for you. You mentioned earlier that your bathroom door would get stuck, right? Did you tell anyone about that? Oh, uh, well, I did tell Sayaka about it last night when we switched rooms. So what you're saying is, only you and Sayaka knew about it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. She had the slightest hint of a smirk on her face. I got the sense she was really starting to get into all this. I see. Then that clears that up. Huh? What clears what up? I'm so lost. Goodbye. Well, see you later. As if forgetting I was even there, she suddenly turned and left the room. I still don't really understand any of this, but... I've already given my room a good once-over. Maybe I should look around somewhere else. I should start looking into where the murder weapon might have come from. And also... I should look into the DVD Sayaka got. Oh, that's right. With Sayaka dead, I have no choice but to see for myself what was in that video. And on top of that, I'm sure there are other areas worth checking out too. Maybe I should see what everyone else thinks, if they'll even talk to me, that is. Alright, before I get any further, I want to check something here. Uh, report card. Ah, okay. See, I was hoping, like, maybe on some off chance that the number that she wrote might have been the number of whoever it was that murdered her. That was a little bit of a stretch, but I was thinking maybe I was good at, you know, maybe there was something there, but I guess not. Okay, this is pretty interesting. I'm really excited to get to the actual trial part of this, because that's always my favorite part in Phoenix Wright, is to do the, do the trial and have it all come together. Way. Hopefully there won't be quite as many twists and turns. You know, I realized something when I was on guard. Okay, so we've already... Son of a... yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already said all this. Uh, I'm pretty sure I talked to Sakura. Yeah, okay. Alright, so I'm gonna go to my room. Wait. Uh, right, yes, because I was in Sayaka's room. Because I want to look at the DVD. This is definitely my room, but the nameplate has Sayaka's name on it. Oh, so someone switched them. This is Sayaka's room, right? But the nameplate has my name on it. The nameplates on my room and Sayaka's room were switched. So all that effort I put into switching rooms without anyone knowing was totally pointless. But why would anyone do that? Huh. That is a curious thing. So we want to get the thing out of the trash bin. The DVD with Sayaka's name on it. Sayaka got really upset after seeing whatever was in that video. I wonder, what did she see? It might not be directly re related to the case, but it might be worth checking out anyway. I'm sorry, Sayaka. I need to borrow this DVD. Okay, so I've got the DVD now. I don't think I could play it from here. I'd probably have to go to the AV room. Yeah, because it's just about the, um, it's just the TV. There's no actual DVD in here. Uh, do I want to leave the area? I think that's really all I came here for, right? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what do they say? So the trash room? Oh, there's people here. The trash room and, uh, Chihiro, I think, is the programmer. So I gotta so talk to her about the number. Something doesn't seem right. The Monokuma file said Sayaka was killed in your room. I just can't stop thinking about it. Could it be the nameplate? Mm -hmm. Very strange. Mr. Anagi, what was Miss Mazono doing in your room? Let me just say this. I absolutely will not allow you to dispose of any evidence in the trash room. Do you really think I'm guilty? Alright, I think that was a subtle hint for me to head to the trash room, which I think is... Yes, I'm going the right way.
Well, there, that's nice and easy. There's a sturdy gate here, no way to get past. Monokuma oh, jeez. Monokuma. It's the end of the line. The trash room. This is where all the trash in the school ev eventually winds up. How did you get this gate open? No, no, you can't go any further. No entry beyond this point. Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in. Cleaning duty? No, no, you can't go any further. No, Who's on no, cleaning duty? You can't go oh. any further. Okay. This is stupid. It'd be faster to just go around and ask the others. No, no, you can't go any further. Okay, Monokuma. Okay. Jeez. I was afraid that the game was just uh, looping at that point. There's a hatch on the floor. Door won't budge. It must be locked. Looks like some kind of switch. Wonder what it does. Oh, uh, let me just double check. Probably won't get anything from this, but I'll check anyway. Okay, I think, yeah, I think I've checked everything. Well, that was kind of a waste, except for finding out about whoever's on cleaning duty. Okay, where do I want to go next? I want to find Chihiro. She was at the gym. Hmm. Just thinking if there's anywhere else. Ah, oh, him. Fine, I'll talk to you. Why do I look so small? Why am I so short compared to everybody? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hey, did I give you permission to do that? Get your hand off the door. Uh, why are you so tall? Why, Akuya, can you tell me anything about cleaning duty? No. You're like a child lost in the woods, you know that? A total waste of space. What do you mean? Taka's the one who has any interest in organizing... Okay, Taka's the one who has any interest in organizing things like that. Oh, good point. Okay. Am I able to go into... Ah! Oh my goodness. Jeez. Curious if there's anything here. Okay, so that was a no-go. Alright, I'm gonna go... Uh, right, the gym. I was gonna go to the gym. Look for Chihiro. Hopefully she's still there. Oh, and the AV room too. I want to go to the AV room and I want to watch the video. Hopefully at some point I'm going to start learning where everything is. To use this to see what's on the DVD. The DVD Sayaka threw in the garbage. I sat down in front of the screen and put the DVD in the player. I pushed play and the screen was dark for a few seconds, but then. Yeah, just as I thought. An image slowly appeared. It looked like some kind of concert. Standing on stage, front and center, was a face I recognized all too well Sayaka. She was there along with the friend she said she that had been so important to her. She was positively glowing there in front of the crowd, so full of life. Seeing that image made it even harder to accept. Except that she was dead. My vision started to blur and darken, and then... That voice I'd come to despise so much began to float out of the speakers. Sayaka Maizono, the ultimate pop sensation, lead singer for a world-famous all-girls pop band. For these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. Suddenly, the screen went dark, and in the next moment, I saw something I could hardly believe. <laughs> what the? Saga had disappeared from the stage, which was now in ruins. But what I noticed even more than that? 
was the figures of the other girls who had all simply collapsed. This ultra-successful team suddenly fell apart. None of them will ever perform on stage again. None of them will ever feel the warmth of the spotlight. For Sayaka, there's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here's the billion-dollar question. What, oh, what could have caused the group to go to pieces? Oh, wow. So, are they actually dead, or is he just holding them hostage? I guess it doesn't really matter at this point anymore. What the hell? That wasn't real, right? They're a super famous pop group. Everyone knows who they are. Is he trying to say he was even able to get to them? If that really did happen, everyone in the outside world must be going crazy. What kind of person would take things this far? Oh, boy. Okay. So, I mean, I figured that was the case. But, uh, now we know for sure. Cleaning duty, eh? As a matter of fact, Monokuma came and talked to me yesterday morning. Okay, yeah, 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 the cleaning thing. Listen to me. He probably realized I was basically in charge, so he decided to talk to me directly. The topic of conversation was assigning cleaning duty. Oh, so you're on cleaning duty now. That's wrong. Actually, no. Oh, okay, then who is? <laughs> Hifumi was also there when we had this conversation. He volunteered right away, so I let him have it. Okay. That's interesting that he would volunteer so quickly. So he's on cleaning duty then. Count on it. Indeed, but we'll swap out on a weekly basis. I'm sure you'll be up before too long. Got it. And when that time comes, I'll be counting on you. Okay, so Hifumi. So he's someone that I'm going to want to talk to about that. Because like I said before... If anyone volunteers for something like that, then that's suspicious. People should not be so gung-ho in a situation like this. And like I said, I was gonna actually check out the shop and uh, see if... Seems like a weird time to do this, you know, considering that there's a murder, but... I wonder if they're even gonna let me buy anything right now. Uh... During your stay here at Hope's Peak Academy, you'll find coins scattered throughout the school. These mono coins are tre uh, treasures valued by kings and thieves alike. You can use the handbook menu to see how many mono coins you have. If you put the coins in this machine, there's a chance you could win a prize. The more coins you use, the better chance you have of getting something new. Yeah, sure, I've got a couple, why not? All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, uh, what am I... What? What am I doing? But I have five coins! Oh, okay, that's... <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? I'm just gonna use all five coins. Okay, so that would probably be good for Sakura. Some punching bags. Oh, I used them... Oh, shoot. Oh. Okay, I thought I was going to get to use it five separate times, not just use them all in one go. Well, shoot. Well, just like that, all my coins are gone. I feel dumb. Oh, and then there's a vending machine over here. I was like, oh, I could eat... Ah. I very, very badly misunderstood that one. My fault. Okay, so I want to go to the gym. So I have to try and keep track of who I'm supposed to talk to. So, like I said, I'm going to talk to Chihiro about the number thing. There she is. And then I'm going to talk to Hifumi. Hey, Chihiro, I was hoping I could ask you something. Huh? Oh, what is it? Before she died, Sayaka left a message. Or Say Sayaka. Ugh. She wrote out the numbers 11037. Do you have any idea what those numbers might mean? Like, could they be a code or something? Mmm, mm, sorry, no. Chihiro slowly shook her head. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I just don't know. Okay, well, don't worry about it. Thanks anyway for trying. Even she doesn't know. Or could she maybe know more than she's letting on? No, couldn't be. That would be shocking if uh, it was, like, timid little Chihiro that did it, but sometimes it's the ones you don't expect. 
I don't know. I feel like the first, like the first trial is going to be the easiest one. So they they might make it more obvious who the killer is, and then slowly over time, it's going to be harder and harder. But that could just be me. I have no idea what the difficulty level of this game is like, so I'm just kind of talking out my butt here. And it's probably driving you guys that have like played this game and know it inside and out crazy. When I like, if I say dumb things out loud or I'm being completely oblivious, so I apologize. All right, so I think I'll talk to Hifumi and then I think I'm gonna wrap it up because a lot happened in this episode. And I don't want to have it go too, too, too long. I'm proud of myself. I'm actually remembering who people are. I'm looking for whoever is on cleaning duty. Mm. Cleaning duty? As a matter of fact, that's me. Why do you ask? It just so happens Monokuma talked to me yesterday and asked me to take care of it. Without someone on cleaning duty, the school would be flooded with trash in no time. <laughs> so I formally applied for the position. Mm. I was gonna start this morning, but after what happened, I haven't had a chance to get started. Since you're on cleaning duty, you can open the gate in front of the trash room. Of course! It's my job to gather up all the garbage and toss it in the trash room. And to do that, they gave me the key for the trash room gate. Mm -hmm. But we're supposed to rotate once a week, so eventually you'll be in charge. Very strange. Wait, hold on. You need a key to get in the trash room? And only the person on cleaning duty has access to the key. What's the point of going to all that trouble? Why not just leave the trash room open all the time so we can all throw things out whenever we want? That does seem more convenient. So in other words... Actually... Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes black and will graduate unless they are discovered. So that's it. That must be why. If anyone could go in and out of the trash room whenever they wanted, then destroying evidence would be easy. The thrill would disappear and things would become boring. Boring? Hey, listen. Anyway, more important than that. Hey, you bastard. Hey, fatty. Why do you want the cleaning duty gig anyway? Oh. I um... just decided to volunteer for something I knew no one else would want to do. What's the big deal? You... Liar, I know why you did it. Is it? You want to dig through all the girls' trash looking for, you know, and poking around at it. There's no way to think about this in a common sense. <laughs> what are you sense talking kind of about? Way? All my love is for 2D. You know what I mean. But there's all kinds of trash diggers like that. Maybe you'll get tired of 2D and then turn to I would yeah, never get tired of 2D. <laughs> After spending a significant amount of time comparing 2D and 3D, I voluntarily choose 2D. The only thing 3D is good for is to shower love and affection on 2D. Oh, and PVC figures. Give me a break. How are you not totally embarrassed to say stuff like that? Hmm. If you're so worried about Hifumi's questionable morality, there's a very easy solution. Whenever a guy has cleaning duty, Sakura can accompany them from picking up the trash and disposing of it. Hey. What? What? If you're as innocent as you claim, where's the harm in it? That's not how it's supposed to... Oh, I didn't even think that that would be the reason he would volunteer for trash duty. On another topic, Kafumi, since you are on cleaning duty, I have a favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. What, so now you suddenly want to join my party? Sorry, but you haven't triggered that flag yet. I mean, you haven't helped me recover from a past trauma, or save a village, or beat a boss. No, nothing like that. I was just hoping to get into the trash room and look around. You oh, okay. So easy. So Hifumi and I headed down to the trash room. Hmm. You'd like me to open the gate, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, when I look at it, it makes me think. They said he killed his wife. He learned how to get by on the inside, but he never stopped dreaming. Get busy living or get busy dying, he said. So him and Rita, they found themselves a way out. Okay. This is probably a reference to something, but I don't know what it is. Whatever, please just hurry up, because there seems to be a lot of references to things that kind of fly over my head, and I'm sure it will be explained to me, and I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Okie dokie, leave it to me. Hifumi pulled a key out of his pocket and used it to flip the switch next to the gate. And then... Mr. Naegi! However, Mr. Naegi, surely you aren't planning to use the trash room to destroy evidence, are you? You fiend, you planned this all along. No, I just wanted to see if the actual killer had tried to destroy every any evidence or not. Hmm. But the actual killer is you, isn't it? You want to see if you left anything behind. Wait, maybe a parallel world? Whatever, let's just hurry up and keep looking. All right, there we go. So I have saved, so we're gonna leave it here. 
So if you guys want to see the continuation of the investigation and the eventual class trial, stay tuned for the next episode. And thank you guys so much for watching. Until then, bye guys.